Hello, my name's Ash. I'm a doctor and a surgical trainee here in London. And I'm also the founder of futuredoc.co, which is a guide that takes people who are applying to medical school in the UK all the way from start to finish. So it's designed as a fully comprehensive, all-in-one course that gives you everything that you need to successfully get your top choice medical school in the UK. And today, what I want to talk about is the UK Medical School's application timeline. So talking through everything, the journey start to finish of how it goes when applying to medical school. The first question and the most common question that I get when uh, talking about the timeline is, how long should I leave to apply? How long should I leave to prepare? And what exactly do I need to be doing? And the truth is, it really depends on yourself. I think the more time that you allow, the easier it is to, to do everything. But you have a certain checklist of things that you have to do to make sure that you're eligible to get a spot at medical school. So really, it's just up to you to how long you want to leave. I personally left it quite late, and I probably only allowed about three months in the summer before applications to actually get everything done. Luckily, I had a job at the hospital already, so I had some of the experience needed before. But I know people who do it quite last minute, and I wouldn't recommend this, but on my course, I do actually have specific advice for people who have left it quite late and need to do everything quite quickly and how to manage that in a short period of time. But otherwise, I would say the longer you allow, the, the easier it is to complete everything. So um, if you left two years, a, a year, that gives you plenty of time. Some people have known they want to be a doctor all their life and have been doing little bits throughout the, the, all the way. But about a year is probably the, the right amount of time, I would say, to get everything that you need. So here, I've made a little, little timeline that explains the journey going from the start of preparing to apply all the way to applying and then all the way up to starting medical school. So let's take the end point as the end of September when medical school will start. So then really the applications will start a year prior to that. So at this time of filming, uh, applications have literally just opened. We're in early September now. So this is almost exactly a year prior to starting medical school. And let's say that you allow about a year to um, prepare everything ready for your application. So let's go back to the very start. And just to kind of give you a bit of an idea of what's going on, I've grouped everything by, I've color coded everything by group. So the blue is everything related to work experience and extracurricular activities. The dark green is aptitude tests. The red is everything related to the UCAS application process. And then the light green is for, um, this is just for exams. And then the yellow is just a massive reminder to when, when you get offered a place at medical school to make sure that you accept it because otherwise you lose it. So let's, let's start at the beginning. So a year before the application opens and you'll be applying, you want to start thinking about the experience that you have to write about. So you need to do a few things. One thing is a regular job that looks after people. It doesn't necessarily have to be hospital re related, although it is preferred. Another thing you have to do is volunteer work. And then another thing you have to do is a shadowing in, in either a hospital or a GP setting. So it's a good time to start contacting hospitals and thinking about how you're going to prepare this. Now, um, I actually have a video on explaining exactly how to get just the right work experience. Uh, so have a look for that as well. And it tells you everything you need to do to organize the work experience. So in that period, you want to be thinking about do, um, arranging, well, carrying out those things and also taking on any hobbies that you can talk about that develop skills that will make you a good doctor. Then I'll just pop my glasses on because this is all quite small writing. Uh, so uh, then you want to start thinking about your aptitude tests. So um, it depends on what aptitude tests you need to do depending on the university that you apply to. So if you need to do the BMAT, there are actually four sittings for the BMAT. One uh, in mid-February, then the second one's in early May, then end of August, 
and then the end of October is the final one for that cycle. So you can do the exam early if you'd like and the advantage to that is that you can um, write your score, if it's a good score, you can write it in your UCAS application and that helps with them to decide whether they'll offer you an interview. Um, then with the UCAT, you, you don't really have much choice with the UCAT, just that the registration opens at the start of May and then the exam period is from the start of July to the start of October. The only thing I would say with that is make sure that you book it early because they get booked up really quickly and you want to try and find well, essentially you want to try and book a time that suits you best. Now, with the aptitude tests in general, my thinking is this. You need to have the, t the timings of your exams for school in your head ahead of planning this. Because really the optimal time to do these is at a time when they don't interfere with your school exams, but early enough so that you can have the time to prepare, but get them out of the way so then you can focus on everything for your application. So really, as long as they don't interfere with your exams, the sooner that you do them, the better. So once those exams are done, you have to start thinking about writing your personal statement. So registration opens um, to submit your UCAS, well the registration process for UCAS opens in late May. But then the actual submission is usually in the first week of September. So with you writing your personal statement, I would say that you want to have it ready to go when you go back to school. So you want it ready for the start of September. Um, and I would allow about a month. And the reason for this is because, again, you want to leave it late enough so that you've gained all the experience and you have plenty to write about. But at the same time, you need to allow enough time to write it, tweak it, you need to show it to lots of people and you'll do lots of changes until you get it just the way you want it. Then once you have finished it, you want to show it to your referee who can also offer some comments on how to tweak it but also they'll be using that personal statement to write your reference. So they need to use that personal statement as as kind of a bit of inspiration for what they're going to write about you, but also they need to know if there's anything big in there that's a massive achievement that you want them to corroborate and write about, or look at from a different angle that complements you in ways that you didn't think about, or maybe is a bit too showy to talk about in your own personal statement. And then the, um, the other thing that you want to do is give them a list of things that you've achieved but you haven't um, put in your statement so that they can add those that add to the qualities that you've already said. And because of this, you need to allow plenty of time for your referee to, to um, write the statement as well. So I would say if you're nice and prepared for the start of September, it means that you get to work, have plenty of time to work with your referee because the deadline is mid-October. So you want to make sure that you've allowed both yourself and them plenty of time to write the best possible statement. Um, and really, as well, the earlier the, you submit your application, the sooner the university, because the universities have lots and lots of applications, so they have loads to work through, so they will take them as they come in. So the sooner that you apply, um, the sooner you can start preparing for your interview, the sooner you'll do your interview as well, and then on the back end of that, the, the longer you'll have to focus on your exams. So. Let's just go to uh, the mid-October where you've submitted your application to UCAS. Now you're just waiting to hear whether you'll be offered an interview. And in that time, you can start reading some books about interviews, start preparing. I have a, a great resource, uh, future.co, that you can look at for interviews. And um, so, so shortly after that, you'll be invited to interview. And Interviews typically are December to February, but they can be as early as November and they can go all the way as late as March. Even I was interviewed at April, in April for when, when I went to medical school. So that, that's your interviews. Then all being well, you should find out not long after 
and usually about a, about a month. By April, you everybody will definitely have found out the result of whether they've been offered a conditional offer or not. And what's really, really important is at the start of May, you have to make sure that you um, accept your offer. Otherwise, you, if you miss the deadline, you simply lose your spot and, and that's it. And that would be an absolute travesty if that happens. So make sure that that doesn't happen. So all being well, you've been offered a place at medical school, you're ready to go, all you need to do is just get those grades. And this is such an important part and it's the final hurdle. So you need to do absolutely everything to make sure that you get those grades. So work as hard as you can, get a tutor if you need to, but just make sure that you do what it takes to get those grades. And then finally, we have the results here. So Scottish results, international baccalaureate, and um, obviously English A-levels, as, as well as all the other international results. And then once some spots might free up, we will have a bit of time for clearing, and then all being well, you'll start medical school at the end of September. So there you have it. That's everything from start to finish and what you should be doing at each stage throughout the medical school application process. So I just want to show you a couple of resources. So if you go to futuredoc.co, I've got a few videos that explain all sorts of, about the aptitude test, writing your personal statement, interviews, choosing the right medical school and all sorts of other things that you need to know along the way. And it's going to give you some really good, useful tips that are going to help you stand out from the competition. And one other resource that I have, which is quite a long form one, is a webinar that I've designed that's about, um, I think it's about 40 minutes long, and it takes you through the whole process of uh, applying to medical school and everything along the way along with some really useful tips. So go there and have a look. I've linked to, I've put the link to this webinar in the video, in the show notes. So have a look at the link below. And other than that, I wish you the best of luck and I will see you in the next video. Take care.